and welcome to your February reading with me. Hey Taurus, this is your reading, so welcome, sit back and relax. February takes us into the beginning of the Chinese New Year, the Fire Rooster, which we've talked about before as well. February is the beginning of the season of eclipses and we have Vesta in our skies, quite visible. I think she's the closest she'll be for the year. So she's the Sacred Heart and High Priestess Energy. She began as the Vestal Virgin and this year has also been touted as Virgo, the Vestal Virgin for 2017. So her energies seem magnified to me. She represents your ability to integrate and focus your energy and bring wholeness to yourself. She's the Sacred Feminine and Creative Energy which allows us to regenerate ourselves and dedicate ourselves to aspirations, plans and goals. She's the Guardian of Joy and Passion within your soul and she represents the Fire of Spirit. She teaches us to renew ourselves. So with all that energy in mind, let's get on to the reading. Four cards from the Morgan Greer deck. Uh, sorry, the Rider Weight, and then one overall energy card from the Morgan Greer, and at the end an oracle card as well. So a really nice reading coming up. Taurus, let's see what's in store for you for February. Wow, how beautiful. The sun, the tower, the moon, three big, three <laughs> really big major arcanas, and the King of Swords. Okay, and I just talked about the eclipses and what do we have here? Kaboom! Two giant sun and moons in your face sort of speaking to you. You guys I think will be quite um, inactivated or sorry, activated by the lunar eclipses and the solar eclipses coming for the year. So this is the last card for you. We will see what it is. Remember if any of these duplicate, they will um, have extra meaning as well. The Ten of Pentacles as your overall energy sign. What I will do is just take that out a little bit so you can see the whole um, cards reading. A lot of people have had pentacles as their overall energy sign, so money seems to be on people's minds or finances or the security of your money and finances. So we see for you, you have three major, major arcanas, then you have a court card, the king of swords, then you have the ten of pentacles. Let's start with the sun. Truly one of the most beautiful cards of the entire deck. It's well regarded and most people love to get this in their reading. They enjoy its energy because it does energize you. We are only alive on this planet due to one thing and that is the energy of the sun. The sun provides us with every single thing that we require. So the power of this card is deep and it's intensive and it creates those energies and emotions for all of the things that go on around it. So you walk into February with this coming your way. Really great card. And also we see the child on the horse there. We think to ourselves to be reminded to be childlike and to embrace the energies of children. That is happiness, joy, wonderment, belief, um, love, affection, spontaneity in particular as well. So the sun talks to us about um, being outdoors, being energized by the sun, being physically healthy. It also talks to us of a spiritual extension and connection to the source and the greater being of gods and um, power, being empowered. 
it talks about fertility and conception as well. So it feels to me, um, and for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, February is one of our most wonderful months of the year where we often find ourselves spending time outdoors in the sun getting all of those wonderful feelings and energies connected. So this card is coming to you whether you're in the north or the south to bring those energies and really fuel yourself up on them. The next card, the tower card, another major arcana. It kind of is the um, total opposite of the sun. We see there the black background and the lightning strike of energy. But again, we're talking energy. So there's a huge amount of energetic connection in those first three cards. It's like you're going to be given a battery pack, like a lithium battery pack, and you're going to go pew. <laughs> you're going to be charged up for some reason, full on. So the tower represents powerful energy coming our way, and it represents change more often than anything. And it tells us that whatever was in place may need to be restructured. That things in our life may have been not balanced. And that by being out of balance, they won't function correctly. So they are dysfunctional. This can be relationships. It can be your career path. It can be the way you are living, the thoughts you are having. It can be your direction in life. So usually when the tower turns up, it is a sign that change is coming and that direction of change is coming. It can be sudden and unexpected. For some people, it's the separation or segregation of relationships. This can be your personal romantic relationships, such as um, engagements or marriages, or if you've been living with someone. This can be interpersonal, such as your families or your careers. Some of you may um, notice that there's disturbance or disharmony in the workplace, interestingly enough. You may see someone suddenly leave in your job and you'll think, wow, how did that happen? What brought that on? You may choose to leave all of a sudden. Oftentimes these leavings come about through dissatisfaction at some core level. When the tower comes in, it reminds us that Every time we shut a door, a new one opens. And without doubt, it takes you on a new direction. And it needs to happen. You might think at the time, oh, really? I didn't want this. I, I really thought I was doing okay or things were going all right. But know that without doubt, that when the tower shakes us up and gives us that bolt of awareness and awakening, it is the best thing that can happen. So yeah, as I say, it can be at many levels and many different things for each and every one of you. It will be different. So as we come to the moon, this third powerful potent card, and we see again this energizing or synergy of the eclipses at the moon and even the sun somewhere in there, we see that you will no doubt be awakened and energetic uh, transfer from the eclipses and probably Vesta as well as the year progresses. The eclipses again are powerful ways of moving us forward, hence probably the reason for the tower being there. Now the moon works closely with our feminine side, so our intuitive abilities, our psychic awareness, our um, ability to perceive the universe at a greater, more distant level than just ourselves, so we connect intuitively. Trust your gut feelings at this time, listen to your dreams, um, connect with the ethers and with spirit guides and angels all around you. Know that you can walk cross the boundary between the living and the dead, if you like, the, the energy of spirit at this time when these energies are around. So you could have prophetic dreams. Also, we note that the moon deals with our hormones in life. So some of you will be going through hormonal changes. For some of you, there, there could be um, menstruation issues or turning into that cycle of menopause for some woman or um, as men coming into puberty, the younger ones coming into puberty. So sexual awareness and orientation as well activated all of these things by the moon. Think of your physical body and in particular your hormones. Keep your body balanced, so needing to sleep. Some of you might find it difficult to sleep. When we 
um, have periods of the full moon, we know that it um, destabilizes our sleep patterns and often creates heightened awareness of um, emotional energy. We can see our energies becoming unbalanced or unstable at the times of the full moons and particularly when eclipses are occurring as well. So don't worry about these energies when they come. Acknowledge them and um, listen to them and be intuitive about what you need to do. If you need extra rest or recuperation, do that. Listen to your body. This is in particular a time to be attuned to your self-awareness and your own bodily requirements and needs. The moon also often talks to us about shadow events and things that are hidden under the cover of the night, so events that take place at night. Some of you may have a whole world that goes on at night, like night workers or people who travel at night or people who um, have communications or relationships that take place in the dark hours. So this could be relevant for some of you as well. I also see the creature coming out of the um, water at the bottom of the moon card and I liken it to a Scorpio or a crab. So this is water signs can be involved in your life at this time. And they may be um, dealing with issues that you are wanting to keep a little bit hidden or private. So sometimes this can be around areas of relationships or um, as I say, hidden relationships, the things that you're not prepared to bring to the surface or that's still um, uh, forming and not really fully knowing exactly how to prepare them to be out in the open. Just be a little bit aware of people around these times. There can be some who will not be dealing with you with the best intentions. So there can be underhand things going on, so keep your eyes aware of that. We come to that next card, the fourth one in the reading, and it is the King of Swords. He is often an air sign person and often an older person, so mid to, you know, from mid age on. He can be the air sign, so the Aquarian, the Libra, the Gemini, and can be often to do with communication or legal documents, so sometimes the signing of documentation one way or another. He could be someone you go to see a justice of the peace to get something signed or you could be uplifting a contractual agreement whether it be the purchase of something new or um, a legal document one way or another, the signing off of something, relationships or the forming of business partnerships. Remember the card right next to it, the moon, and it does tell you be careful at this point when you are signing anything new. So think twice, make sure the documents are legal and that they are fair and looking after your best interests as well. The King of Swords can also be um, creating the energy of activation. So they come in and they activate people and energy with their intellect and their intelligence. So some of you may be on a hyperdrive with your brains and you might be thinking, Oh, yada yada, I need to do this and go there and be this and have that and blah, blah, blah. So there could be a month of really big activity for you, given all these major arcana cards and this sword energy as well. That King of Swords could also be someone new coming into your life, an ear sign person, or consequently he may be someone related to you in a family or friends way that is supportive or um, helping you or involved some way in those three major arcana cards that he sits next to. If we come down to that bottom card and we look at the Ten of um, Pentacles, it's a beautiful card of support, nurture, trust, um, hard work and families is, are, are the sort of terms and meanings for that card. So it talks about, you can see there, there's a couple, a slightly older couple, he has his arm protectively around her and they are looking inwards, they're standing at the door of their castle and they are looking in and there's this feeling of happy satisfaction or satedness. And it's a 10, so it's the number of completion of cycles and it's often to do with money or your material possessions. So this is a good overall energetic card for the whole reading, it tells us that somewhere along the line there is this feeling of stability and love and um, 
safety within the boundaries of your home or castle and that your finances may have paid dividends over the years and they are either supporting you one way or another or they are taking you on a further trip of investment with how you decide to utilize your money. I sometimes think of this card especially in this deck when I think of um, the potential of a couple buying a property either their own property or an investment so there's that possibility with this um, particular layout as well so guys nice reading plenty to think about and plenty of action for you let's put them away and see what your last card for the reading is with one of these beautiful warm daily message energies and yours is family <laughs> and we just talked a little bit about family towards the end of the reading so let's see what the message is actually about this card does talk about that someone is on your mind in your family and you are wanting um, not necessarily mediation but you're wanting them to be brought back into the arms or the bonds of love and let them know that there is support there for them so this card could be talking about bringing together um, something that is slightly fractured or dis or not disharmony but feeling as though it's tender and, and again they need to come back in and have some support and nurture I'll read the words for you this situation is rooted in an emotional experience with a family member which we can help you to understand and heal in your mind and heart surround this person yourself and the experience with calming blue light and many angels be open to the gifts within the situation and allow yourself to feel peace so there is a wonderful calmness with this card and I think um, previously when I've worked with this card it talks about taking a moment in time to think when you look at the card and it mentions the word family your first thought person in your family that comes to mind is who this message is delivered at so whoever popped into your mind there and then is where this healing energy is going so if there has been any words or tension or this person is feeling um, in a place where they need support or nurture or love know that even your thoughts and goodwill and intention will be directed to them in the guise of healing energy so I think that's a very beautiful loving supportive way uh, to end the reading and particularly for Taurians who you're the earth sign energy and I often think of you as the um, the nurturers of your family you know the backbone that holds it together so there's a really nice message for you um, from the angels for your family and if any of you thought of passed over loved ones who have passed over they will be with you and and they will know that the love and the thoughts are coming their way and also they circulate that back to you as well so there we are Taurians, a beautiful reading and thank you all for joining me. It's a true gift to be able to do these readings for you. I wish you the very, very best for February and as we move into March for 2017. Take care everyone, much love, namaste.